We do have a quorum, so I'd like to call the meeting to order and turn it over to Mr. Morton. Welcome, everybody. I hope every, uh, all the members of the RTM have been doing their sit-to-stand exercises all day long. We do not have a, a, a short item tonight. This is, uh, we've got a, a lot to do. Um, without objection, uh, I'll accept the agenda and uh, ask for a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the April 22nd uh, meeting of the RTM. I have a motion, please. I yeah, second, please. Second. Okay. Got that, guys? Okay. Any uh, comments on the April 22nd minutes? I see not. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the, the minutes as written for April 22nd? Aye. Very good. Very good. No? Abstentions? I see none. Thank you. Minutes are approved. Um, announcements? Um, I, I have one. Um, I, I wanted to make you all aware of the passing of Gretchen Terhune, who passed April 24th, uh, 2019, uh, in Portland. But she and Richard lived in Darien for 44 years before retiring to Maine. And um, from 1983 to 1994, she was the executive director of the United Way here in Darien. She made a, a very strong contribution to this community and served over 20 years here in the RTM. So um, I just remember her, she was in my church, and I just remember her as a thoughtful, caring person. Uh, who, uh, wherever she went, made an impact. So I'd ask us all to pause for a moment and remember Gretchen Terhune. Thank you. Tonight, we uh, have consideration and action on a whole bunch of uh, budgetary items. Um, if we are under Robert's rules here, and uh, so cheering, clapping, that kind of thing doesn't, doesn't hold here. This is a meeting of the town legislature, and that doesn't pass. If you're going to speak tonight, keep your Remarks concise. I can just say that the hearing in this body is very good very early in the meetings and can fade a little bit later on. So uh, the, the sharper and more concise you make your uh, any, any comments that you have, the better. It works the best for you. So without uh, further ado, um, We'll go to item 19.7 and start with appropriation of the reserve fund for capital and non-recurring expenditures. And uh, speaking on behalf of the Finance and Budget Committee, the Chair, Jack Davis. Thank you, Seth. Um, I'm going to give you a heads up. We're changing how we're looking at the budget this year. So the initial overview will be a little bit longer, but everything else will be much shorter. I'm Jack Davis, District 3, Chair of the Finance and Budget Committee. I move RTM Resolution 197, authorizing and approving the July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2020 budget. Is there a second? If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. The FMB committee met many times over the past six months. In addition to the many Board of Selectmen, Board of Ed, and Board of Finance meetings that the committee attends. I'd like to thank the committee. I'd actually like them to stand up so everybody knows who's been on it for their hard work. 
Oh, come on, you guys can stand up for two minutes. Um, and thank Bert Van Stupenakel and Taylor Carter, who are the vice chairs, and Mike Heights, who is our clerk. And um, I'd like to thank the committee for their dedication, thoughtful questions, and productive discussions throughout the year. I also want to mention that significant work is done by our elected officials and town employees over the past months working to put together this budget. Budgets start in September, and they're projecting what will be going on basically nine months from when it starts to then cover a 12-month period. Virtually all of our elected officials are volunteers, and they each dedicate significant time and effort to the budget process. Okay, here we go. Over the past few years, the budget process has evolved. It is how the town, including the Board of Ed, the overall town, is doing business. The Board of Selectmen changed how it prepares its budget, reviewing prior year's transfers and comparing year-end balances to adopted budget and adjusting this year's budget accordingly. The Board of Selectmen budget process was modified to be comparable to the Board of Ed, and I want to give a little clarity on that. The Board of Selectmen budget development process has always been very good and continues to be so. The similarity with the Board of Ed is that it's the town administrator's budget, similar to on the Board of Ed side, it's the superintendent's budget until each of those respective boards vote. In addition, there was a change on the department heads in the Board of Selectmen. In the past, we all had access to the department heads after they presented the budget. Not so this year. This year, we directed our questions, no different than we do on the Board of Ed, to the Board of Selectmen and then back there back to the administration, which happens to be Kate. It worked much better. There were a few bumps, but we got there. For fiscal year 20, the town changed its accounting for certain park and rec self-supporting programs. The change is that the Board of Selectmen used to run these programs through a balance sheet or pass-through account. The Board of Selectmen now are running all revenues and expenses related to those self-supporting programs through budgetary account. To properly reflect this change, on some of the slides we will be showing, we will show adjusted budgets. The amount is $495,000, and on the surface, it would appear that the increase in expenditures by the Board of Selectmen is up, but that accounted for 1.5% of what the increase was. The Board of Finance modified its fund balance policies in the fall of 2019. This policy pegged the minimum fund balance at 12% of budgetary revenues and delineated uses of the fund balance. We're actually going to address that in 1911 on the special appropriations. In conjunction with the Board of Finance fund balance discussions, FMB partnered with the Director of Finance, Jen Chinesky, and the Board of Finance and reviewed most existing funds. The RTM will address the outcome of these in our June meeting, but the result was to, one, recommend closing several existing dormant accounts, moving assigned <coughs> fund balances to unassigned fund balance, and two, identifying four other funds to be used in the proposed 2020 uh, budget, including the maintenance of our historic cemeteries and for park and rec capital projects at Cherry Lawn and Weed Beach. The town treasurer has also agreed to review our town investment policy with the Board of Finance. The Board of Finance continued its prior methodology used to determine the adjusted grand list. And if these weren't enough, in case none of you realized, this year was a reval year. And it does have implications on the fiscal 20 budget. For these reasons, FMB's approach to how we reviewed our budget modified. We continued the open dialogue with Jamie and the Board of Selectmen, who has always encouraged such dialogue, as well as similar with Tara. And I would be foolish not to thank Dr. Landon for his excellent interim work as our superintendent. 
and the Board of Ed. And special thanks to Kate Bush, Jen Chinesky, and Mike Feeney for their work throughout the year with our uh, committee. F&B continues to analyze adopted budgets versus actual final numbers, and we review the transfers made by the Board of Finance, the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Ed throughout the year, and what its implication to next year's budgets are. F&B engaged the boards prior to their vote. We try and do it before the horse has left the barn. We do this in stages, first with the Board of Selectmen and Board of Ed, then with the Board of Finance. Over the years, you've heard me talk about a buddy system. This new methodology with the Board of Selectmen had a few snags in the buddy system, but we'll get that back on track. And John Zagroski has always encouraged F&B input discussions, not only during budget, but throughout the year, and we're thankful for that. The result was F&B's analysis was essentially completed shortly after the Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen voted with only minor discussions with the Board of Finance, waiting their final outcome on how and when to pay for things. Last year, our budget presentation tried something new, overhead projections on financial budgets. We'll continue that. We hopeful that the print is larger based upon comments from six and three. Um, not saying that we've accomplished that. But there's other changes. And no, I'll still be doing a lot of the presenting tonight. That's not one of the changes. But on the debt issuance side, we'll attempt to quantify the cost of all the bonding in future years. We haven't done that before. We're doing it now. And we've also modified the slides, reconciling the total amount requested by the Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen to how the Board of Finance decided to pay for these requests. That brings us to the biggest change of the evening. In the past, the highlight, the crescendo of the evening was the mill rate. What it was, the increase from the prior year, and we're changing that focus. The new focus tonight is the amounts required to be raised through taxes and the amount of total approved budget requests, which are the Board of Selectmen and Board of Ed's operating and capital requested budgets approved by the Board of Finance. What we have today now is now the Board of Finance budget being delivered to us. This better reflects our budget analysis, provides greater understanding and transparency, and deals with what our elected officials actually control revenue, operating expenditures, and capital requests. The Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen do not control the grand list. Neither does the Board of Finance, although they do approve adjustments. As such, the mill rate is nothing more than a mere mathematical calculation. The numerator controlled by our town boards, the denominator, the grand list, controlled by market factors. We're going to look at this two ways. First, reconciling the approved budget requested to the amount needed. Second, we're going to look at each of the component parts, the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Ed, and the Board of Finance. Looking at the overhead slide, hard to do with my glasses. <clears throat> the first view is a high-level view of the Board of Finance proposed budget based upon many resolutions we have before us. This is how we do things with the resolutions. Total town operating expenditures are 170, uh, $147.9 million, up $2.7 million, or 1.85% over last year's $145.2 million, which represents the amount paid by the general fund. Total revenue is 9.8 million, up 1.1, or approximately 12% from the prior year. It's driven by four major factors. 195,000, which I mentioned due to the accounting change on um, PNR self-supporting programs. 428 million for ECH, which was at risk in prior years and was conservatively not recorded. 
170,000 in investment income, and 30,000 for P&Z fees, which if you recall, we passed that ordinance in the RTM in February. This brings the total to be raised through taxes to $138 million, up 1.6 million, or only 1.17%. When we add back the bonding for capital items and special appropriation, total approved budget requests are 139.8 million, adding only another seven basis points or approximately one and a quarter percent to the prior year. So if you really want to know what the headlines are, with budgets that have employees that have contractual raises, with investments that you're going to see we're doing in this town, our total budget, the amount that needs to be raised through taxes, is up only 1.17%. That's outstanding. And the total budget requested is up only one and a quarter percent. This next slide shows the three departments and what needs to be done. I actually don't need that so much. It's still going to the total, sorry, it's still going to the total approved budget requested. The difference is, is it's done by components. Revenue is typically taken away in the mill rate calculation, so it doesn't give a fair um, presentation of what the Board of Selectmen budget is. When we do that, you can see that the net Board of Selectmen operating budget is up 2.3%. Um, and that is with average salary increases greater than two, adding four FTEs, three of which, which are the civilian dispatch, will allow the town to invest in an SRO for the middle school and a dedicated narcotics officer to work with our other communities to address the opioid crisis. The total Board of Selectmen um, capital request is up 22%, which results in an overall 4% increase. But I want to put this in better perspective. Number one, capital fluctuates between the town side and the school side every year. This year it happens to be the town side. Number two, most of that investment relates to two properties that the town has purchased and we knew we're going to have improvements made to them. The improvements are having, happening now. And to say, oh, they're up because of that is almost a little ludicrous. Had the investments, if I reduce the investments in Highland Farms and Short Lane, the Board of Selectmen capital request would actually be down by 2.6% and the total Board of Selectmen approved budget request would be at 1.8%. That's much lower than the guidance, which was 3%, and lower than current inflation. The Board of Ed operating budget is up 2.3%, and that's after adding 4.6 FTEs four of which are attributable, and this will be discussed later, is elementary school psychologists. Total Board of Ed capital requests are down significantly, which means the total request by the Board of Ed this year is, compared to last year, is less than 1%. Debt service represents priorly approved bonding, which we approved in this chamber. The Board of Finance structuring the debt has always looked to keep debt payments level whilst taking advantage of low interest rates and our town's AAA rating, which we continue to have. Outstanding debt at the end of the fiscal year 
will be approximately $6 million and approximately $51 million at the end of fiscal year 20. Future debt payments are declining and the outstanding debt five years out in fiscal year 24 is currently, before we take other action tonight, planned to be about $22 million, which help positions this town for the Oxford School Project. Lastly, the grand list has declined by virtue of the town's five-year revaluation, moving from $8.6 billion to approximately $8.47 billion, representing a decline of 1.63%. Had the grand list remained stable or the same, our increase this year would have been again 1.17%. So I think the real headline from this evening are those two. If you noticed, I haven't talked about the mill rate yet. And we're not going to get to it to about section F. I also have to always briefly discuss unknowns. The budget we see here tonight are the action of our town boards. However, our town finances could be affected by the legislative action in Hartford. Specifically, the governor's budget proposes a state personal property car tax, removing such taxes and revenue from municipalities. That would result in Darien losing $4.6 million. Also, the governor's budget has municipalities paying 25% of the normal teacher, and when we say teacher's contract, we talk about certified staff. That's anyone who, that includes school psychologists, social workers, um, speech pathologists, any um, administrators, they're all in that same pension. So the teacher's pension costs, plus an additional percentage for those towns whose average teacher's salary or above the state average teacher salary. Now, before I get into what the numbers are, I have to mention that the board of, our Board of Ed has made public comment to the state committees that are addressing this, advising them not to implement for a myriad of reasons, which are not just financial. Other government representatives of our town has done the same. Now, for Darien, there's good news and bad news. The bad news is we may have to pay it. The good news is, compared to all the other, most of lower Fairfield County, we have one of the lowest incremental averages above teacher salary. We're at 14.8%. So our total payment would be 39 to 40% of the incremental. I want to tell you what our other towns surrounding us have. Norwalk is 24% over, so they would be paying 49%. Um, Stanford is 17% over, so they would be paying 42. And both of those have much bigger budgets, and if you haven't been following what's going on in the Stanford school system, they already are running a $2 million deficit and have millions of dollars to um, take care of mold in their schools because they didn't make the investments that Darianne was making. And New Canaan is at 23%, so they would be paying 48%. We're much lower. I'm just about done with this section. Contained in this resolution before you tonight are seven different items, A through G. The three most important are going to be the appropriation of capital, town operating, and the education budget. The remaining D through G are mathematical or administrative. They simply sum up the budget, generate necessary mill rate, transfer amounts to various funds. And so I 
Thank you for your indulgence on this part, and I promise, promise, that all of the remaining individual reports are much, much shorter. I lost Seth. Are you done? No, I'm going to the next one. If Seth isn't here, I'll introduce myself. Oh, F and B. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Are you going to just do this item separately? Yes, now I have to introduce that one separately. Okay. Okay. Speaking for F&B, Jack Davis. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jack Davis, Chairman of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. I've moved Section A of RTM Resolution 19-7, Appropriation in the Reserve Fund for Capital and Non-Recurring Expenditures. Do I have a second? Thank you. If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. <clears throat> All of our capital projects approved in this budget reside in this fund. We have to approve the capital first because when we get to the Board of Selectmen operating, that really is nothing more than a transfer, so we can't transfer something we haven't approved first. That's why fixed assets and capital go first. The capital projects are transferred into a fund that is controlled by the Board of Finance. I'm, asking, I'm answering this because I can't tell you how many times I get the question, if the Board of Selectmen are over or under on a capital project, do they get to use that money for something else? The answer is no. It goes into a contingency account where the Board of Finance controls and manages for those that are slightly over or slightly under, and they can use it for other items during the course of the year, similar to the voting booths that we all had, the new ones that were really nice, were paid out of this contingency account. There are four ways that the town pays for capital projects. Which payment option used is the purview of the Board of Finance. The options are bond for projects, pay for capital projects from the general fund, pay for capital projects from the contingency account. Um, I mentioned that the voting booths, the general fund we did earlier this year when we approved the electrical panels for the schools or taxing for capital projects within the current budget. For fiscal year 20, total approved capital requests are $4.8 million, down 700,000 from fiscal 19. The Board of Finance determined to pay for the capital as, as follows. And actually, what I'm going to, yep. That's where I want to go. But I'm going to read it the other way up. We have a special appropriation for 500,000. That's using fund balance. We're bonding $1.2 million. That brings us to the capital that will be paid through taxes. And that's what we're going to be working on. Funding for this year's taxes are approximately um, 1 1, I'm sorry, $3.1 million. I do want to mention um, there are capital revenues. The, um, and so they reduce it, and I'll cover what they are later. Within the board of, um, if I was to do a breakdown of what those revenues are, most of them are grants or investment income. The grants are for a road um, and LOSIP and state aid, which are always at risk for our town because until the budget is passed, what we're promised and what we get can be two different things and about $100,000 of investment income because this fund has a balance and therefore gets money on it. 
Within the Board of Selectmen capital requests, funding for the key areas are 500,000 um, for fire, um, op the fire company um, apparatus. We do not bond for replacing our fire engines. $210,000 for replacement of um, police vehicles, although one of the vehicles replaced is being repurposed in the town. 185,000 for the replacement of public works equipment. 75,000 for upgrades to the town hall gym. And 900,000 for repaving our roads. It should be noted that while this is a capital expense, it is not bonded and it's done on an annual basis. And there are towns that do bond this. The above items total $1.8 million, or 68% of all approved Board of Selectmen capital projects. Um, capital for the Board of Ed is approximately $175,000 to upgrade corridor lighting at middle school, $168,000 to replace windows in the original building at Hindley, as well as phase three of the upgrade of the digital controls for 205,000. All the other capital projects that we're paying for taxes are under $100,000. At our meeting on April 29th, with 10 of 15 members present, um, I'm gonna make this comment once. In the future, I will plan budget meetings not to fall on the same night that the high school has its quarrel, because we lost members to that. And this is the second year in a row, I should have learned. Um, but with 10 or 15 members present, the RTM f and committed voted unanimously to approve both the Board of Ed and Board of Selectmen Capital and recommend the same to the full RTM. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Any town officials? Any other committees that would like to report on it? Clara? <laughs> oh, Clara. Clara. I saw Clara's hand. I'm sorry. You can do it right from the microphone. No, this is just for A. Oh, never mind that. Do you have something for 9-7A, Diane? This, we're still on 9-7A, the appropriation in the reserve fund for capital. An operate, okay, so we're just, we're still on A. So are there any more questions or comments or any other thing that needs to be said on that? Okay, are we ready to vote on section A then? It's 9-7A. So all those in favor, please rise. Thank you. Any opposed? Abstentions? I guess we're ready for 9-7B. 19, yes, I'm sorry, I'm saying 9, it's 19. On, no, you're a C. C. So now we're ready for. This was A, right? Yes. 19-7A. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, okay. 
Um, now I guess we're ready for the next one, Mr. Davis. I am Jack Davis, District 3, Chairman of the RTM F&B Committee. I move Section B of RTM Resolution 19-7, authorizing and improving appropriations in the general fund for the Selectman operating budget. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. Make sure I'm on the right slide. <clears throat> the overall town operating budget is $47.7 million, up 196000 or 41 basis points compared to the prior year's budget of $47 million. By way of background, the portion of this budget is comprised of four primary parts, town services, the library operating um, budget grant, debt service, and the transfer of funds to the reserve fund for capital and non-recurring expenditures that we just voted on. It is also important to note that this part of the budget is the appropriations for expenditures. Associated revenues are addressed in Section F as an offset. This is how we see it on our resolution. I'm going to give it to how we look at it. The Board of Selectmen operating budget, as we mentioned, is up 2.32% uh, net of Board of Selectmen revenues and without the library grant. Adjusted town budget reflects the accounting change for the park and rec self-funded programs, which um, simply included expenses and revenues resulting in the reclassification of 149 uh, 195,000, which previously weren't in the budgetary expenses or revenue. But it does account for a 1.5 increase. The town is adding four FTEs. Three are attributable to adding as evening civilian dispatch at a cost of 223,000. Besides greater communications and dispatch efficiency, the adding of these three will allow the town to assign an SRO to Middlesex Middle School and a dedicated narcotics officer addressing opioid crisis and interface with surrounding town narcotics squad. Medical insurance is up 229,000 or 7.5%. Set asides for labor contracts are up 76,000 or 25% from fiscal year 19. And if you remember, this was discussed at the recently approved union contract where we stated that because we have set-asides for union negotiations, the police contract that had an incremental cost was covered for fiscal year 19, as well as the budget was covered for fiscal year 20. This is where that is done. I also want to remind you that the average salary was greater than 2% for most of our employees. Library operating grant um, is up 2.34% and is $3.8 million. Debt service, terms, conditions, and length of any debt issuance is the purview of the Board of Finance. Only the town can issue debt. Neither the Board of Ed or the Sewer Authority can issue it. As such, all debt has components of town debt, Board of Ed debt, and sewer debt but they all end up in the town operating budget. Total debt payment for the proposed budget is 10,676 down 137,000 or 1.2 percent from the prior year. The breakup of, of the debt is over there on the board. I'm not going to read it so we can move this along. Um, we have an anomaly this year, and so I'm going to report this. Usually, and probably by the end of this fiscal year, the Board of Ed debt is always greater than the town. Not so at the end of this year right now. Right now, 41% of our outstanding $60 million debt 
is attributable to the Board of Ed, 55% is attributable to the town, and 40 to sewer projects, which are paid specifically by the user fees. I have a projection of what the debt payments are. I'm not going to read that. If anybody's interested, I mean, you can raise your hand and I will read it, but we can move on and you can read it in the report attached to the minutes. This capital contribution, which is the last part, is what we just transferred to the reserve fund. At our meeting on April 29th, with 10 out of 15 members present, the F&B committee unanimously voted to approve the selectman operating budget and recommend to the, the full RTM. I told you these were going to be shorter. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to, our moderators had uh, a little problem, so he's uh, unfortunately going to leave us this evening. But Joanne Hennessy is our acting moderator, so she will step in. I will give you the vote for the last count, 19-7A. Uh, it was 80 in favor, uh, no no no's and one abstention. Okay, so I will invite Joanne up to ask for other reports. And like, just ask me if there are any other reports on 19-7B. Thank you for your indulgence as uh, Seth uh, had to leave. Are there any other reports on 19-7B town officials? Any other committee chairs? M Mac? Unless you want to give it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Mac Patrick, Chairman of Public Health and Safety. Our committee met tonight with 11 of 16 members present to discuss and report to you on portions of resolution 19-7B. Thank you. Um, of the budget relating to police, fire, disaster pre preparedness, emergency medical services, and human services. The police budget has an overall increase of four and a quarter percent, primarily driven by civil dispatch hires and patrol personnel expenditures. Decreases are occurring in professional standards and animal control. The fire budget has an overall decrease of one percent. The three all-volunteer fire departments have an eight and a half percent decrease, which is primarily driven by the fire department's medical services budget being centralized in the fire commission budget. The fire commission and fire marshal budgets have increases driven by greater part-time hours of the blight officer now under the fire marshal. Decreases are occurring due to shifting certain salary and overtime costs to the emergency management budget. Ongoing savings are expected due to the um, switch overall to natural gas. The emergency medical services, or our post-53 budget, is down 4.5%, or $6,000, due to the anticipated decrease in the equipment maintenance contract. It is noteworthy that the staffing of post-53 is all volunteer, and much of the operation is self-funded through donations. The full town-funded budget is about $129,000. Incredible. Um, the Human Services Department, which includes the Senior Center, Senior Transportation, Youth Services, and the Public Health Department, has an overall flat budget. Of note, the Public Health Department's budget is up three and three quarters percent, primarily due to increased staffing. Their budget of $332,000 receives revenue of $118,000 from licenses and permits. Youth Services budget is up about two percent due to the increased enrollments to various programs. The human services budget is flat due to outside assistance needs being down and donations up in the senior center as well. The Public Health and Safety Committee voted unanimously to recommend support of these aspects of the town budget 11 to 0. Thank you. Other committee chairs? Diane? Good evening. I'm Diane Conalog, and I'm the Vice Chair of the Parks and Recreation Committee. Um, I am presenting Adele Conniff's report tonight because she is out of town, not able to be with us. 
The major budget drivers for the Parks and Recreation Department operating budget are salary increases and the restoration of one full-time position of park maintenance employee. The department maintains approximately 210 acres of parkland. In addition to the newly acquired 16.2 acres at Highland Farm, the new East Picnic Area, Short Lane property, the Police Department grounds, and the Hecker property. In addition, the department man maintains numerous facilities within our parks. The maintenance position will enable the department to support all of the parks and facilities at the high level expected throughout the town. Having a six-man crew will help support all of the additional park and town land that the department is now responsible for, along with the growth of the Parks and Recreation Department and all of their new initiatives. The Parks and Recreation portion of the Reserve Fund for Capital and Non-Recurring Expenses is $88,000. There is $45,000 for Work Equipment Reserve, $5,000 for Tree Replacement, $8,000 for an Irrigation Time Clock Module at Cherry Lawn, $15,000 for a Sunshade, and $15,000 to update playground equipment. Department requests for replacement of the basketball court at Cherry Lawn and replacement of the backstop at Hollihan Field were deferred. The original department capital request for improvements to Short Lane, Weed Beach of $500,000 was deferred and $50,000 budgeted for modest improvements or maintenance. In 2014, the town spent $1,925,000 1, on the purchase and bonding of Short Lane. It was designated as parkland and part of Weed Beach. The $50,000 will be funded as part of a special appropriation, that's 1911, instead of as capital. The Parks and Recreation Department continues to look for creative ways to increase the revenues. They have worked with an Eagle Scout to build kayak racks and rented them, created a picnic area by clearing land at Short Lane Weed Beach, which can be rented, created new annual town events, Weed Beach Fest, Something Sweet, an old-fashioned Christmas at Tilly Pond, and taken over the fireworks. They also launched a commemorative bench program. Parks and Recreation revenue continues to increase and is expected to be well over $600,000. The department is always looking to save money as well. Fencing at Highland Farm and the entrance to Selix Woods was installed by our maintenance group. The RTM Parks and Recreation Committee met on May 13th, that's tonight, 2019, with 10 of 15 members present constituting a quorum. We voted 10 in favor of the Parks and Recreation Department's portion of the 2019 uh, 2020 Town of Darien operating and capital budgets and zero opposed. We voted 10 in favor of, of the 50,000 appropriation for improvements maintenance at Short Lane Weed Beach funded by a special appropriation, 1911 and zero opposed. It has been a pleasure to work with Pam Geary and her staff throughout the budget process. The department has had a very busy year, so we particularly appreciate the time taken to help us understand this budget. Thank you also to Lori Bora and the Parks and Recreation Commission for keeping our committee well informed. The RTM Parks and Recreation Committee supports the Parks and Recreation portion of the Board of Finance proposed 2019-2020 Town of Darien budget and hopes that you will support it too. Thank you. Other committee chairs? Monica. Uh, good evening. My name is Monica McNally. I am um, District 2 Chair of Public Works Committee for the RTM. At a special meeting of the Public Works Committee held on April 24th, 
We had 10 of 12 members present, and the Public Works Committee considered and voted unanimously to recommend approval to the full RTM of the Public Works capital expenditures and the Public Works operating portions of the 2019-2020 Board of Selectmen's budget. The committee reviewed and discussed this budget in detail with Public Works Director Ed Gentile. The budget reflects no change in the number of full-time or part-time employees. There is an overall budgeted increase in spending of $45,410, or 1.05%, on a total appropriations budget of $4,340,963. The budget is presented while the Public Works Department continues to make meaningful and measurable improvements in the service provided to the town. A large driver of the $10,820 in overtime budgeted is due to a much um, heavier weekend and evening use of the town hall and the Mather Center. The $8.1 or $12,567 reduction in motor fuel, motor fuel and lubricants is due to securing a uh, more favorable unit price on the contract. The telecommunications budget increased 16% to $9,360. This was due to the installation of, 45, uh, of GPS devices in 45 vehicles. The increase of $4,000 to the tire budget will be used to replace tires on the Public Works loader, which occurs every other year. Cost savings continue to accrue in the waste management area. We now recycle more tonnage than we have to pay to have hauled away. This has led to a 22,414, or 2.1% savings, on our solid waste disposing costs. The food scrap, food scrap program sorry, is ahead of schedule and is collecting almost one ton of material a week to be composted. Our goal is one and a half tons. There have been questions raised regarding the recycling program and fees. Darien has a contract with City Carding to continue to pay us $7.50 a ton for our recyclable material until mid-2024. The capital request for $200,000 for sidewalk construction is for the extension of sidewalks in three areas. On Mansfield Avenue from Mansfield Place, um, this will be connected to Overbrook. Uh, the gap on Locust Hill, approximately 350 feet short of Old Kings Highway South, will be filled. And on Edgerton, a sidewalk will be built between West Avenue and West Elm, and repairs will be made on the Edgerton side. Surveys at all three of these areas are finished, and layouts are being done now. Um, it is anticipated that these three projects will be completed in 2020. The design fee request of $175,000 is for intersection improvement at Naroten Avenue and Ledge Road, where a right-hand lane will be created to improve traffic flow. The application for grant money through the State of Connecticut and the West Cog requires this money to be available when the application is submitted. If the application is denied, this money will not be spent. The Public Works Committee sincerely appreciates the consistent high-quality work and the level of service the Public Works Department provides to Darien. We ask you to vote yes and ratify 19.7B and 19.11. Thank you. Um, any other committee chairs? Public officials? Anyone wishing to comment? Any other members of the RTM? Questions, comments? Members of the public? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All in favor of 19-B, please rise. Opposed? Abstentions?
going to do 19 dash. Clara Sartori. Okay, now Clara Sartori for, is going to do 19 dash C, 19 dash 7 C. Good evening. I'm Clara Sartori, Chairman of the RTM Education Committee. Um, I think Mr. Davis has already moved item 19-7 and asked to waive the reading of the resolution, so I'll just get right to our report. The RTM Education Committee met on May 6th with 12 of 15 members present. The committee... Well, I think Mr. Davis moved it. Do I have to do a C? Okay, sorry. Okay. All right. Sorry, I have to backtrack. I want to move item 19-7C and ask to waive the reading of the resolution. That, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, the RTM Education Committee met on May 6th with 12 of 15 members present. The committee voted 11 in favor and one opposed to support the education operating budget of $100,118,409, an increase of 2.03% over the approved budget in 2018-19. This number reflects a reduction of $568,694 in health care costs that was reported by the Board of Education in April. There was a minority opinion, and it was based on the concern that an increased budget each year is unsustainable, particularly with the fiscal crisis in Hartford. The need for the elementary school psychologist was not so much debated. However, the belief was that the funds for new initiatives could be fully found within a budget of more than $100 million, considering that there is an expected decrease in elementary sections next year. Additionally, it was suggested that it would be prudent to wait until see what the new superintendent's ideas would be before uh, proceeding. Okay? Okay. As in the past, personnel and health insurance represent the largest portion of the budget. More than three quarters of the budget of the education operating budget is allocated to this expense. Operating costs, including textbooks, consumables, resource and professional development, represent 16 per percent. Fixed costs, uh, such as transportation and property insurance, as well as utilities, account for 4 percent, and equipment accounts for 1 percent. During the course of the budget season, which began on January 5th with a full-day workshop, the Education Committee members thoughtfully reviewed the budget discussed major initiatives, and submitted questions to the Board of Education. It's been a pl privilege to work with my fellow Education Committee members who generously gave of their time to help ensure that the community provides the best education for Darien students at a reasonable cost to the taxpayers. The committee would also like to thank Mrs. Tara Ackman and the Board of Education for its tireless efforts on behalf of Darien students. Eight of nine board members, as well as key members of the administration, attended our April 8th meeting to address our questions. Some concerns are ongoing, and we hope that the Board of Education understands that the RTM Education Committee's questions can provide useful insight into issues important to this community. The Education Committee discussed the following major issues impacting the budget this year. In early January, the committee requested a more detailed explanation for the administration's proposed addition of four elementary school psychologists, budgeted at $70,905 each. While the expense for next year was partially upset by a reallocation of personnel and by reduction in the number of elementary sections from 118 to 115, the Education Committee acknowledges that the addition of personnel demands rigorous scrutiny. 
On January 15th, the Board of Ed scheduled a presentation by school principals, which addressed many of the committee's concerns, including a schedule of how the psychologist's time would be spent during the day. The committee is convinced of the research-based and practical need for the additional psychologists to work with students and families in the areas of student mental health and wellness, as well as to advise teachers on crisis situations and preventive interventions when necessary. It is clear that the Board of Education owns this initiative and that it will transcend the transition to a new superintendent this summer. Statements from parents at the Board of Ed meetings and public hearing were additionally powerful. The committee is confident that this addition is a worthwhile investment in students at a critical time. This budget contains funds to allow department heads at Darien High School to be full-time administrators rather than be required to teach a class. The administration believes this change will allow department heads to focus on consistent management of each department's academic curriculum and provide students with involved opportunity I'm sorry, with improved opportunity to maintain ongoing contact with teachers outside the classroom. Concern was expressed about the substitute accounts, particularly at Darien High School, where teachers are asked to fill in to substitute. There was concern that the teachers are being asked to give up important planning time to sub. The committee hopes that a school climate survey will be useful in benchmarking and improving morale. The Education Committee is very impressed with Fitch Academy and is pleased that there is a new permanent facility. The district alternate learning program is well worth the investment. The Education Committee is concerned with the issue of equity in parent contributions to high school athletic teams and encourages the Board of Education to plan another deep dive into the athletic program. The committee is also concerned about special education outplacement costs of $6,722,425 and encourages the Board of Ed to continue to be more proactive in building the special ed programs here in Darien to meet the children within the district. The Education Committee applauds the Board of Ed for its effort to keep students safe and expects that the Board of Ed and town officials will continue to follow the best practices in this critically important area. Finally, the committee congratulates the Board of Ed on the new superintendent and looks forward to meeting him in the fall. The Education Committee recommends that the members of the RTM approve the Board of Education budget of $100,118,409. Thank you. Um, First, just to give you the result of 19-7B, it passed with 81 in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. Uh, Any other committee chairs would like to talk on the education budget? Yes? On education. Yeah, 19-C. C, do you want it? Yeah, I next. I don't get to miss any of these. (laughs) I'm Jack Davis, District Lead Chair of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. Thank you, Ms. Santori and the Education Committee for a very thorough report on the Board of Ed tonight. I will try to repeat very little. I want to remind everyone about the uniqueness of the Board of Ed operating budget. In the state of Connecticut, the Board of Ed are elected by local citizenry and their operating expenses funded by local tax dollars. But their authority comes from the state. As such, the Board of Finance and RTM does not have line item veto as we do on Board of Selectmen and Board of Ed Capital or the Board of Selectmen Operating Budget. We approve an aggregate amount for expenditures and such amount is final. In contrast, the line items reviewed are mere placeholders. But that doesn't mean that we don't review them. The administration presents to the Board of Ed Budget Committee, now headed by former RTM F&B Vice Chair Deb Ritchie, um, a member of the Board of Ed, all of those transfers 
Those transfers are then delivered and are included in the Board of Ed packets, and we review them as well. And then at the end of the year, Mike Feeney reviews the entire adopted budget to final budget. So while they are placeholders, we do follow them not only throughout the course of the year, but also during budget review. Our committee's main focus was on three areas. The additional of 4.6 net FTEs with emphasis on the four elementary school psychologists, excess cost reimbursement, and the way we look at their, in, um, their increases or expense increases by our C or our line, our line item that are greater than 3%, which was what the Board of Finance guidance was, with a large dollar amount. We don't look at $1,000 items. The Board of Ed, as has been mentioned, lion's share is personnel, about 40, um, 68%. Healthcare is up 478 or 4%, and those benefits count for another 15%. Special ed had no significant increase, and due to a new school bus contract, transportation was up 156 or 7%, resulting in a total cost of $2.2 million. Our major discussion centered on the addition of four elementary school psychologists to the to create two school psychologists at every elementary school. Numerous articles and studies have stated that public schools have become the primary provider of mental health services to children, not only in the state, but around the nation. And those that follow the Board of Ed or have students in our school should know that implementing social-emotional well-being is part of the curriculum and professional development goals of our district. The Board of Ed had robust discussions that were discussed by the Education Committee with the school administration. Analysis was requested and received. Surprisingly, the amount of time spent with non-special ed students was significant. I think some of the board members may have said it best. By taking care of emotional needs of young students before those needs affect their educational outcomes is a win-win for the community. First and foremost, the child is better. And then there's a potential to save future costs. Former RTM Education Chair Dennis Maroney referenced the old oil fram, oil filters ad in this conversation. You can pay me now, or you can pay me much, much more later. At our meeting on April 29th, with 10 of 15 members present, the FMB committee voted unanimously to approve the education operating budget and recommend the same to the full RTM. Thank you. Any other committee chairs to speak on this? Public officials? Any other members of the RTM? Comments? Public, anyone? Okay, I guess we're ready to vote. All in favor of 19-7C, please rise. Opposed? Abstentions? Opposed? All opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, we'll move on to, yeah, 19-7D. We usually do that by acclamation. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. 
Still Jack Davis. I move Section D, RTM Resolution 19-7, authorizing and approving the appropriations of total appropriations in the general fund. Is there a second? Second. I waive the reading of the resolution if there's no objection. We typically do this by acclamation since it's adding some numbers together, B and um, C, and it's been checked and double checked by both committee members and town officials. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Any against? Thank you. So we know how to add. Item E, appropriation for the transfer of funds. Let me catch up. I move Section E of the RTM Resolution 19-7, authorizing and approving the appropriations of transfer of funds. Is there a second? Second. If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. This item includes five different appropriations from different funds. All of the appropriations are self-funding, which means the fund that collects the revenue, user fees or taxes, automatically fees the expenses for the service for which it provides. The sewer funds, excluding sewer capital funds, reimburse the town for sewer-related town debt, which is part of the Board of Selectmen budget, the RTM early approved. I'm not going to read the funds. They're up there. They're on your um, sheet. I'm assuming everybody can see them. At our regular meeting on April 29, 2019, the f &B committee voted unanimously to approve all the appropriations and recommend the same to the full RTM. Are there any other committee chairs to report on this? Public officials? Members of the RTM? Members of the public? Seeing none, uh, we're ready to vote on 19-7E. Uh, All in favor, please rise. All opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Jack Davis, District 3, Chairman of the Finance and Budget Committee. I move Section F of RTM 19-7, authorizing and approving the mill rate. Yep, we're finally there. Do I have a second? second? If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. This item sets the mill rate that is used for collecting taxes during the coming fiscal year. For those that divided the total appropriations by the grand list to recalculate the mill rate, by now you know that does not work. Last year, the Board of Finance modified its methodology for calculating the adjusted grand list and eliminating the $1 million drawdown from fund balance that was rarely used. The new methodology is the grand list is reduced by abatements for veterans, volunteers, seniors that represent state and local tax relief. The actual collection rate for the last five years is calculated that collection rate is reduced by 25 basis points to allow for changes to the grand list, especially in a year where there's a reval, and actual collection rate. The mill rate is then calculated by dividing the amount needed to be raised through taxes by that adjusted grand list and multiplying that result by 1,000. On the chart behind me, I have to make sure sometimes that I'm on the right slide. You can see that our, while the grand list went down by 1.36%, based upon lower abatement and higher collection rate, the adjusted grand list was down by a lesser amount, 1.26%, the result of which is a mill rate of 167 
for the fiscal year 20, a difference of 20, uh, 39 basis points or a 2.43% increase. I want to remind everyone, our mill rate is going up higher than what the budgets did simply because our denominator went down. Again, something not controlled by our elected officials. At our April 20th, 9th, 2019 meeting with 10 of 15 members present, the FMB committee voted unanimously to approve the mill rate and recommend the same to the full RTM. Okay, first the results for 19-7C, 80 in favor and one opposed, and for 19-7E, 81 in favor, no opposed, no abstentions on either one. Um, are there any other committee chairs who wish to report? Public officials? Hmm? Yes, I did. What? Yes, I asked for it. Um, I have it written down so I don't Members forget. of the RTM? Members of the public? Okay, we're ready to vote on the um, authorization. All in favor? Please rise. All opposed? Sorry, wait for the music. All opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Thank you. Okay, so now we We do G, I do yeah. G. Yeah. Um, Item 19-7G, authorized borrowing of up to $5 million. Mr. Davis. I'm Jack Davis, District 3, Chairman of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. I move Section G of the RTM Resolution 19-7, authorizing and approving $5 million in borrowing. Is there a second? Second. If there are no objections, I propose waiving the reading. This authorization is part of each year's annual budget resolution. It authorizes the town to issue short-term borrowings up to $5 million without the need of the RTM approval. This allows the town to fund the budget in the event there is a timing difference between tax collections and expenditures. Although the town has not needed to utilize this authority in recent history, it gives them the necessary flexibility. I wanted to add, they would be issuing um, most probably tax anticipation notes. It's not as if they have a line of credit out there. The committee met on April 29, 2019, with 10 of 15 members present and voted unanimously to approve and recommend the same to the full RTM. Thank you. Uh, the result of 19-7F, the mill rate, was 81 in favor, no opposed, no abstentions. Um, for 19-7G, uh, any other committee chairs to report? Public officials? Members of the RTM? Members of the public? Okay, let's vote on 19-7G, authorization, uh, authorized borrowing of up to $5 million. All in favor, please rise. All opposed? Abstentions? Make sure Max sees it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is 19-8, appropriation of $30 million for refunding of certain of the town's bonds and authorizing issuance of refunding bonds to finance such appropriation. Mr. Davis. I am still Jack Davis. 
District 3, Chair of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee, I move RTM Resolution 19-8, appropriating $30 million to refund certain of the town's outstanding bonds and authorizing the issuance of refunding bonds to finance such appropriation. Is there a second? Second. If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. I've been um, asked not to tell you why we do this anymore, um, which is more of an inside joke. The fact of the matter is this gives the flexibility to the Board of Finance to go and um, re um, fund and issue bonds if there's a favorable interest rate or term and condition. Um, bond issuance by the town from 2010 to 2019 are covered by this resolution with the total outstanding debt, as I mentioned before, about 60 million. It's important to note that this resolution does not impact the requirement for the RTM to approve any new issuances of debt to fund new capital projects and passage of this resolution rescinds any authorization but unissued portions from our previous refunding that we've done over last year. At the regular meeting on um, April 29th, um, with 10 of 15 members present, the RTM um, committee voted unanimously to approve this resolution and recommend the same to the full RTM. Um, the result on 19-7G, uh, we had 75 in, uh, 79 excuse me, in favor and two abstentions. On um, the appropriation, any other committee chairs wishing to speak? Public officials? Members of the RTM? Members of the public? Okay, uh, then let's vote on 17, 19-8, uh, appropriation of $30 million for the um, refunding of the bonds. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is 19-9, um, consideration in action on appropriation of $609,000 for Highland Farm Improvement Projects and authorizing the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of $609,000 to meet said appropriation. Um, we're going to have a little uh, procedural thing here on this one. Lois Schneider is not aware of it, but she's going to be coming up here shortly. Uh, in the Rules Committee, uh, we have a situation where when the moderator is unable to moderate the meeting, the Vice Chair of Rules, which is myself, takes over as acting moderator. We uh, planned ahead for the eventuality that because I'm also Chair of PZNH, there might be an issue where I might want to speak on an issue, and the moderator is not allowed to enter into any debate. So we uh, voted on a second acting moderator, which is Mrs. Schneider. So because I may speak on this issue, I'm going to ask her to come over for, uh, to take over the meeting for this resolution. Let's all give Lois a hand. And thank you, Lois. Neither of us knew we were going to be up here, so we did not dress for the occasion. <laughs> um, so now you call on Jack. To, to introduce. You, you call on Jack to, um, to, re to report out. Okay. You just call on Jack and then Hi. come on over here and I'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're dealing with resolution 19-9. I'm calling on um, Jack Davis to introduce it and talk about it. Thank you, Lois. I'm Jack Davis, District 3 Chairman of the RTM Finance and Budget Committee. I move RTM Resolution 19-9, consideration and action on the appropriation of 609000 for the Highland Farm Improvements Project authorizing the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of 609000 to meet said appropriation. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. 
If there are no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. The improvements to Highland Farm will include a walking path to parking lots and a shed for equipment and other minor improvements consistent with the PNZ approval. Initially, the improvements were to be completed over a two-year period. The Board of Selectmen decided during their budget deliberations to move all the work to 2020, saving money. Estimates for the work, contrary to a Dairy and Times letter to the editor, was in fact rather significant detail was um, being prepared in the fall of 2018 and has been reviewed by the Board of Selectmen and the FMB committee. The town will save funds on the original estimate by having public works and park and rec employees do some of the work, as well as consolidating the remaining work into a single year. The detail is so much that we can almost count the number of pebbles that are going on to the walking trail. Um, we said that we're going to talk about future bonding. So we have to set some parameters because we don't know what the final debt structure will be. But assuming that this amount is issued in February 2020, being a 20-year bond, level principal, interest at 3.17%, which is 50 basis points higher than our March 2019 issue, and the first coupon payment um, of interest six months down the road with the first principal payment 12 months down the road, Based upon those factors, the estimated cost for the bonding would be approximately $43,000 per year, or approximately one half of a basis point using the current adjusted grand list over the life of this bond. The FMB committee met on April 29th with 10 or 15 members present and voted unanimously to approve this, recommend, uh, this resolution and recommend the same to the full RTM. Thank you, Jack. Are there any other committee chairs that would like to speak? Joanne Hennessy, Chair of PCNH, District 5. Um, I know there's been a lot of uh, emails and things fl uh, flying around about this, so I wanted to give everyone a little bit of background for those of you who weren't on the RTM a couple of years ago when we approved this. Um, the chance to buy the field at Ox Ridge came to us because the town had a right of first refusal on this. We debated, Jack Davis and I were very involved in this. We um, debated it extensively within, uh, within the town with Jamie talking about it and decided this was a once in a generation opportunity that we should avail ourselves of. It was $6.2 million of taxpayer money. To spend this money, we wanted to be sure that the taxpayers were going to get value. This, we are not the land trust. We aren't going to buy it um, just to have it be purely passive open space. Um, in the town plan of conservation and development, there are two categories of open space. One is active and one is passive. We agreed to buy this as active open space. It is still active, it is still open space, which is one of the things that was asked for on the town parks and rec survey, and um, this is consistent with it. When we brought this up to the RTM back in 2017, and it is all on tape, we were very explicit about the potential uses for this field. We outlined for the RTM that it was approved for even up to four athletic fields. We're not looking to do that, but we could. It was approved for walking paths, for picnicking. Um, we made sure there was the opportunity for irrigation because some people expressed interest in a community garden. We wanted to keep the approval as broad-based as possible for usage for the town. Parking was explicitly talked about. You have to have parking so that people can get there and use it. And there are two separate parking areas because this is a very large piece of property and people are going to park on two sides of it because they're going to access different parts of the property for different purposes. When this came up, we, uh, every member at the RTM saw what was called Exhibit C, which outlined all these specific active uses. It was talked about 
it was debated, and it was unanimously approved. At that point in time, we had the support of all the neighbors. If the town had not bought this property and exercised our right of first refusal, down the road it could have been bought by developers and become single-family or multifamily housing. By us purchasing it, it remains open space. It is going to be actively used open space. The Board of Selectmen has come up with plans for using it, which, um, which we have supported, and we encourage everyone who was here then uh, to continue to support the use of um, the active use of this field. Um, I know I will be supporting it, and we hope I do hope the rest of the RTM will do the same. Thank you. Are there any other committee chairs that would like to comment? I'm Diane Conalog, and I'm Vice Chairman of the Park and Rec Com Committee. Um, we are secondary on this, on this item tonight. I'd like to say the, the Parks and Recreation Committee met this evening to discuss item 19.9. The committee had many questions regarding 19.9. Among them, first and foremost, why this committee is secondary in reporting on this item when the property is not under park and recreation. Two, what is meant by the term state and federal grants in the resolution. Three, the size of the shed, is it smaller than 1,000 square feet? Also, its placement is a concern. Four, concerns about $739,972, um, the opinion of probable construction costs from Redness and Mead. Five, concerns about placement of the porta potties and screening. Six, placement versus gravel. I'm sorry, that wasn't placement. Pavement versus gravel. Twelve members of 15 were present for this item this evening, constituting a quorum. The committee voted unanimously to table the item regarding Highland Farm property. I've spoken to town council here tonight, and I understand that we should be not tabling, but postponing to a certain date. So I'd like to ask to postpone the voting on this item to the regular RTM September meeting. Madam Moderator, would you call me back when it's the appropriate time to present this? Madam Moderator. <laughs> September, right? To September. Okay. Until September. Okay. So the item on the floor is um, the proposal to postpone the, the the voting or the voting on this issue till September, and that's what we'll be discussing first. So I'm going to open up the floor to people who would like to comment on postponing this issue. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to. Um, I can make a motion to postpone the voting on this issue to September. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, now I'd like to open up the floor to discussion of the postponement. Um, are there people that would like to comment? Well, that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Jamie Stevenson, First Selectman. I'd like to make myself available to answer questions from the Parks and Rec Committee. I'm sorry that there are questions um, tonight that we probably could have answered for you in advance. But if you would like to re 
go through those questions one by one. I'll do my best to answer them for you. I think the, the first one is why Park and Rec is voting on this uh, when the property is not under Park and Rec, under the Park and Rec committee, it's under, or the commission, it's under the selectmen. That, that's that a rules question. That was rules. Okay. Go ahead, Lois. Okay, that we, was um, proposed and, and voted on by the rules committee, feeling that you would care to comment on this issue. Okay. Well, well, it's not a park and rec. Yeah. Jack, do you want to speak into the <laughs> Um, yes, it, it, well, she's answering the questions, but I, I'm going to answer that one, and then we can go there. Yes. The Park and, Rec com, um, com, park and Rec was added to it because while it is not a park asset, it is managed by Park and Rec. What is the second one? Yeah, please. Um, oops. Oops. The motion on the floor is to adjourn the vote until the September meeting. I don't think we should be getting into the substance of the proposed resolution at this time. Um, I think the thought was that if some of these questions were answered, it might affect what some people think whether or not to postpone. If they feel the questions were adequately answered, they might feel there is no reason to postpone or not. I don't understand the rationale for the postponement. It's not going to change anything. This, no, no, let me, let me finish what I have to say. Hold on, hold on. Can I finish what I'm saying? The proposal that we have before us tonight is consistent with the planning and zoning approval. It's consistent with what we said we were going to be putting on the property. The estimates have been done. By moving this to bonding now, it allows the town to start work on it so it's available in the summer. That's one of the nuances to bonding or special appropriation. Ten days after the approval, work can begin where many of the other things we just did in the budget can't begin until July 1st. The, um, there have been ample um, discussions at the PNZ public hearing on this. They have discussed the parking. They have discussed the shed, which is limited, um, I don't know what the final size of the shed would be, but it could never be more than a thousand feet because that's what's here in the purchase agreement. And so we can either move this asset forward so it's available for all members of the community to use it, or we can delay it for the summer, which means that only the people that live in this vicinity can get to it because the public parking is stopping. That was part of the special permit. That's why the parking lots need to be built because temporary parking on grass was not allowed by PNZ. So um, I have a letter that better explains it over here from John Sinney that was sent out earlier today because he couldn't make it. But that would be on substance, not on postponement. I'm against postponing it. We're going to gain nothing by it. Okay, we're, we're keeping the conversation to the topic of postponement or not postponement, and that's what the comments are relating to at this point. 
um, back as PZ and H. Um, one of the things, the permit that was approved for temporary parking is a time sensitive permit. Um, I don't know exactly when it expires, but when it expires, there can be no more temporary parking, um, according to the way the PZ, uh, the planning and zoning permit uh, has gone. This project has been a couple of years already, and many of us have gotten questions why isn't it in use already? Um, the town has voted to buy it. There are townspeople who want to use it, who are waiting to use it, and who would like us to go ahead and not keep postponing it ad infinitum. And I don't know whether you want to answer any more of your questions now or just vote on the postponement. As Jamie said, we wish these questions had come up before tonight. Jamie, do you have some more comments you'd like to make? Any other people that would like to come in on the postponement? Sure. You're doing a good job, Lois. <laughs> um, it's hard. Name and district. Emily is. McDermott, District 6. I'm on the Parks and Recs Committee that is asking for the postponement. First, I just want to say we have no alternative agenda. Um, we are not at all opposed to the property being used for the town. The information that was put together on these two printed sheets that had all the line items, it was not made available to us a long time ago. It was maybe within the last week or less. The numbers are big. They've always been big. It was an expensive piece of property to buy, so we do want it to be used. But when looking at the large amount of money that is going to be spent, we just think that there are some legitimate questions. I don't live in the area of the Hunt Club, so this is of no benefit to me to complain about what something might potentially look like. But I do think it's a legitimate question to say where are those porta potties going to go, and are they going to be discreetly placed and shielded from view? Um, do we need to spend so much money on paving a lot? Why can't it just be gravel? Um, the placement of the shed, where is that going to go? How big is it going to be? Again, I'm thinking of the people who live in the area. So these were just questions that we thought were appropriate to ask. They apparently have not been answered because everybody in the room felt the same way. So that's where these questions are coming from. It is not an attempt to stop the town from having events on the property because we all want that too. So I hope that we're on the same page on enough of this and we all felt that a postponement would be helpful to answer some of those questions. So that's where it's coming from. Um, this is... Jamie, you want to talk? Ed Washeka, District 3. Uh, we've had two people that came up here and asked questions. Jamie tried to answer the questions, wasn't allowed to answer the questions, so I think we should let her answer the questions. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, Diane, I'd love to answer your questions. So I think that Jack uh, and Lois have already answered the question about why Parks and Rec was asked to engage and vote on this. Um, if you could refresh me on the rest of your questions. I think part of this problem stems from the fact that while we had been following, we were never assuming that we would be secondary on the agenda and therefore we weren't really caught up and we didn't have anybody come to talk to us. Uh, some of us went to various meetings around but these are 
are really legitimate concerns then at, you know, at the last minute when we're voting and it comes out that we're secondary on the agenda. Um, what, in the, in the resolution, it says, uses the term state and federal funds. Can you tell us what that means? Sure. I would like to say that the Parks and Rec Commission has been fully engaged in the detailing of this project. I, so I understand that, but happens. because we, we're on the RTM and it yes. doesn't come under us, it, it came under selectmen. I think probably we didn't follow it as closely as we could have. Had we known, we would be voting on this. The reference in the bond resolution to state and federal grants that may be available is a standard piece that they put in all the bond resolutions um, so that if such grants are available, that it's reflected that they're part of the full appropriation. We don't expect that there are, at this time, any state, state or federal grants available for the project, but it's just boilerplate language. Okay. There was no anticipation of applying for any state or federal grants for this project. Okay. But if one becomes available, you could accept it or would accept yes, it? Yes, the bond resolution would allow us to consider it. And it would not require us to come back. It would be within that full $609,000 appropriation. And would there be strings attached to that? You know, with a state or federal grant, you never know. I know. So that would be something that would have to be available evaluated if one became available, but I, I just want to be upfront. We don't expect that. We're not seeking any. We don't believe that there are any available. And we would always adjudicate that with town council and the board of finance. Um, the size of the shed. I think we started out with a thousand foot shed we were talking about. Where did that get to at the end, the, the shed? It has always been from day one not to exceed 1,000 square feet. Okay. So There's it, been no change in that criteria from the beginning of the project. Um, and the placement of that shed? Yes, the placement of that shed was detailed in the Redness and Mead um, schematic design plans, and it is on the southwestern corner of the property uh, to the south of the western parking lot, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's anticipated that that would be the location of until such permanent not to exceed 1,000 square foot structure can be built. That would be the location fully screened of a porta potty that would be placed seasonally and in a place that wouldn't interfere with the uh, line of sight of any of the neighbors. All right, they, it, there were a lot of concerns about the amount 739,972. Uh, opinion of probable construction costs from Redness and Mead. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the question is, we went from that amount to the 609. I know some things were done in-house, mm -hmm. but why, why the difference, the big difference there? And um, So I'll just answer that one first. It's just would a you fine... Are choosing to do all of those things that are on there? Because that, this is pretty expensive. I think our committee was worried about the amount. Well, the, oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I went over the um, proposed cost with our public works director, and we felt that some of the items we could do internally. There were some things such as the fill or the, um, the topsoil that we would already have that we did not have to go out and purchase. Um, and then there was an, a number of pieces of the work that we could actually do internally. So that's why we felt we could get it down from the 700000 to the six hundred. Okay. But we don't really know which of those items. We, w we weren't clear on which of those items it would be done in-house. Um, pavement versus gravel was a big sure. question some people had here. I'm happy to answer that. Craig Flaherty was quite clear when he made the presentation about the construction of the parking areas. 
porous asphalt is actually environmentally a better installation than gravel. When gravel and soil interact with the oils from cars, it creates an impervious surface that is less desirable for good drainage. The porous asphalt will make for better drainage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we, uh, the screening was another thing of the, what type of screening how far these would be, the setback would be from the road, from the neighbors across the street? Yeah, all, all the setbacks are in accordance with P&Z regulations, and um, we have met with neighbors, and we have uh, made promises to the neighbors that we would work with them in terms of uh, screening as the project progresses. You know, we didn't want to commit to certain landscaping if, if they needed something moved in a different direction or um, they prefer a mix of low and higher kinds of, of screening materials. So we really want to partner with the neighbors on the screening. Okay. Um, I just want to say that our committee is very much in favor of doing something there, but we just want to be certain what we're voting on tonight. And I think it, it, there are probably other questions um, that we would have liked to have explored and gone through uh, having a little bit more time with. So I'd like to invite any of my committee members to come up if they have any other questions. And sure. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Can I ask the question? Can I ask the question? Yes, yes. I'm supposed to ask it. What's the question? I'm, I'm wondering why they chose September instead of June. Um, when a, we've just been discussing how we handle this, and um, it's our understanding that there are several options we could do at this point. We could, you could withdraw the request and let us discuss it and vote, or we could withdraw the request and change the date to, to voting in June instead of September, which allows you more time, but we don't lose the whole summer to go ahead with this project if that's possible. Um, and so it's a decision on how, you, or we could, yeah, we could withdraw it completely, withdraw it and, and propose that we postpone till June, or leave it and postpone it to September and have the group vote on it. Is there, um, and the, the point of June is that you have chance that you, there's more public, inf that you can get more information, and secondly, um, that we can get things moving this summer and get this available to the public. So did, would you like to? I, I cannot withdraw this at this point because I, I think, you know, it's the whole committee here, and based on the fact that we had this meeting and we had an hour to discuss all of this, we really need more time to discuss it, so I would not withdraw it. Okay. Then, um, as far yeah, as then, then we, John. Okay. If you want to come up here, come up. Here. She didn't end it to June, or she can't. No, that's okay. okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. We would consider postponing to the June meeting. Okay, so you, you would consider postponing to, yes. to June? Yes. Okay, how do we have to handle this? Do we withdraw? Does she withdraw the... the she wants to amend it. Okay, you, uh, Diane, you amend it to say that the, the proposal is to, um, to postpone until June, and then the person that seconded it has to second that again, as far as I understand it. We need a second to that also. Well, you have to... Okay. Yeah. Diane, we need you to amend your, your proposal, please. Okay. Um, all right. Just look at this. I move that we postpone item 19.9 to the June 2019 RTM meeting. I do have a second. Okay. Um, is somebody calling the question on this now? Yes. Okay. Um, so now the the RTM members vote on the, the on the table is the discuss is the plan to 
postpone the, the dis further discussion and the vote on this on 19 dash, what are we talking about? 19 dash 9 until our June meeting. Okay? No, there's no public comment at this point. Because we're not discussing the issue, we're just discussing the postponement. So. No, we can't. Sorry, the um, the call, the question's been called, and and that's it's up to the RTM now to vote on this issue. So, um, yes. This is a new motion. Yes. So there should be discussion on the new motion. Okay. What? How do we deal with this? Okay. So. It's an amended motion. Vote on calling the question. Oh, okay, that's true. Wayne, <laughs> what would you like us to do? <laughs> do we vote on the calling the question? Procedurally, where we are, there was a motion to postpone to a date certain. Any such motion can be amended. There has been a motion to amend that date from September to June. There's been a second to that. That is on the floor. I believe there has also been, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought I heard someone move, move the previous question, which is the cutoff of the debate. If that is before us, then that requires a second, and that requires a two-thirds vote. Okay. So that's what's on the table, then? To call the question. To call, I, I thought I heard someone move to call the question. Is that correct? That was, first, that was before the amendment. Then what is before us is the motion to amend, which is now before the body, which is debatable. It is still conceivable and possible if, if one wished to, one could move that, move that question, cut off the debate if they wish to make that motion. But that has not been made as yet. Okay, so we're debating now. We're debating, we're debating the motion to amend. That's been moved and seconded. That is before you now. Now we can have discussion. Now, now you can have discussion. So what's on, on the floor is the, is the motion to, to move the, postpone the, the voting on this till June. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Are there any comments about postponing the, 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 um, the motion to postpone to June? That would be nice. Edward Shekha, District 3, I just think we should vote no on this uh, postponement, and then vote to approve the original resolution. Okay. Resolution. Carolyn? Carolyn Luz, District 6. Just what do we call this, this new vote? What we <laughs> <laughs> For those who have to take re the, the measure, yes. Right. So I don't call it 19-9. I just call it a motion to amend. That's all I want to know. Okay, any more discussion on the motion to amend? Okay, then. Jim Cameron, District 4. Point of information. We are voting on the amendment, not the postponement. Is that correct? Okay, so we're voting on the amended proposal to postpone to June. And then we get to vote on, on, the main motion. Okay. on the motion to postpone the discussion in, in June because we've changed it from September to June. Is that correct? No. 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 It's not quite as difficult as we might think. What is before the body now is a motion to amend. Right. To, to postpone to a date certain. So the motion you are voting on is whether or not you want this postponed until June. Oh, okay. That's the issue. That's the only issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we're voting on, John? Right. No, no, September's gone because that's been amended. So she's, been, she's withdrawn, she's changed it. 
right? That's correct. We're voting and now whether we're postponing till June or not postponing and going back to discussing the, um, the uh, resolution. Okay. So all in favor, uh, go ahead. Cheryl Russell, District 2. Um, we're voting on this to June, and I think that Diane made the right decision, as I'm on Park and Rec also, because if we do do it out to September, we would lose the summer. And what, that wasn't our intent, to make this a big hoopla of this whole thing. Okay. We were just concerned about the financial situation and some ramifications of the state being involved and if, in fact, there could be a grant and what exactly strings are attached to that. I think if we can do this on our next meeting is June 10th, I believe, that maybe we can all agree to go through with the June 10th and give us some time to do this the right way. We usually do our due diligence, and we do our homework, and we mm -hmm. dot our I's, mm -hmm. and we're always prepared. But this time, that September 10th information that was out September 10th that Jack gave to the Rules Committee never got to us until this past week. So seeing that, we didn't have enough time. I understand that. So I also would like to know, I would also like to allow the public who's here. When people come out to a meeting, they should be allowed to speak. So before we vote, we should hear from the public. Is it fair? I think we... But they're not talking about the postponement. They're going to talk about the issue. The only issue is whether or not we postpone to June 10, to, to, to June 10. It's the only issue they can talk about. Oh, okay. I, I think we always allow committees to report our team members to vote, and then they go from the public. Do you want to make a statement? Let me clarify one more time. If, in fact, you want this to be put off to June, then you vote yes. If you want it to be voted tonight, you vote no. Procedurally, what we have always done is a matter of courtesy. We've allowed committee members to speak. We've allowed members of the RTM to speak. And if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak, we have allowed them that courtesy that is in our rules. So if there's a member from the public that wishes to speak, it is my opinion they should be allowed to do that. But the only thing that they are voting on is whether or not this should be amended to June. That's the only motion before the floor. So is there anyone else that wants to speak about the motion of postponing the, the vote to June? Okay, seeing none, then are we ready to vote? Okay. All in, all in favor? Did you decide? Yeah, the public was at the afternoon. But we're only talking not about the issue. We're talking about postponing the vote to June. And the reason why it's appropriate to expect to vote. No, it's just about the vote, not about whether or not we support or against the, re the resolution. I'm Lauren Callahan, and I do live in the neighborhood. We need your address, please. 561 Middlesex Road. Okay. And it concerns me gravely that an issue of such importance to not only our community but to the entire town with the last iconic piece of land would actually end up in a situation where only one week is had in order for people to become fully educated on this issue. It's completely inappropriate. The second thing, well, I heard you say it was a week. You've only had it for about a week. Is that correct? Well, some people, I think if we go back and review the record, that's what I heard. Sorry. The second thing that's been, that makes me incredibly certain that this needs more education and more synergy and more collaboration is that I've heard two factually untruth comments. Mrs. Hennessy, you said that you actually had support Lauren, we're of talking them. about whether we postpone or not. I know, not. the neighbors. And if you would like to take this time over this next month to actually re-engage with the neighbors and find out if you have support of this program, because you put on record that you do. And I would imagine, well, I heard that you said that the neighbors agreed. The neighbors don't agree. Then make sure that they still agree when you go and spend the $600,000. Okay, can and we, can we Jamie focus Jamie mentioned on that she's working with the neighbors. So again, take this month to make sure that you are working with the neighbors 
instead of passing something through where we don't even know exactly what's going to be in front of us. Let us be camaraderie with you, collaborate with you, to make sure that those things are put in the places where you're actually building a beautiful field and park as you envisioned, not where you're railroading it through when the RTM doesn't or the Parks and Rec don't even know where things are going. Thank you. Anyone else? We good? We're going to vote? So what's in front of us is voting on the postponement, the resolution, uh, the proposal to postpone the, the voting on this issue, further discussion and voting on this issue to our June meeting. All in favor, please rise. Um, all the opposed, please stand. Anybody abstaining, please rise. And a procedural issue, we need to wait for the vote on this to come, to get re recorded and reported before we can proceed any further. Okay. Um, while we're waiting, the vote on 19-7F, the mill rate was 81 in favor, um, none opposed, and no abstentions. On 19-8, the vote was 79 in favor with two abstentions.
Okay, so the um, resolution, the resolution to postpone was 44 in favor, 34 against, and two abstentions. So we will stop talking about this and bring it up at our June meeting. And moving on to 19-10, and I'm turning it back over to Joanne. Thank you, Lois. Thanks very much for, uh, for stepping in. Okay. Um, Next up is 19-10, Consideration and Action on Appropriation of $558,250 for the Hindley School Roof Replacement Project and authorizing the ish. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Better? 19-10, uh, Consideration and Action on Appropriation of $558,250 for the Hindley School Roof Replacement Project and authorizing the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of $558,250 to meet said uh, appropriation. Mr. Davis. <clears throat> I move RTM Resolution 1910, consideration and action on the appropriation of $558,250 for the Hinley School roof and authorization of the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of $558,000. $250 to meet said appropriation. Do I have a second? second? Thank you. There's no objections. I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. Um, basically, it's a partial rebuild of the roof. The roof leaks needs to be fixed. On a separate note, once this roof is fixed, it can be added to the um, school evaluation of having solar panels installed which they are already looking at other buildings. We should also uh, note that Darien has taken the leadership and special thanks to Jamie, Board of Selectmen, Ed Gentile, and the Sustainability Committee because they brought three, I believe, buildings online which will be saving us money and cu cutting down the carbon footprint. Estimated cost using the same criteria that we had before for this um, Bonding is $36,000 a year average, which is one half of 1% using the current adjusted grant list. The F&B committee met on April 29th with 10 of 15 members present and voted unanimously to approve this resolution and recommend the same to the full RTM. Other committee chairs? Elected officials? Members of the RTM, members of the public. Okay, we're ready to vote. All in favor, please rise. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. All right, next up is 19-11, um, Consideration and Action on Special Appropriation of $500,000 for four capital projects. I remain Jack Davis. I move RTM Resolution 1911, Consideration Action on Special Appropriation of 500000 for four capital projects. Is there a second? Thank you. If there are no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. Um, as we mentioned previously, the Board of Finance modified the um, town's fund balance policies. These are being funded by fund balance. And effectively, within 10 days after we vote, these appropriations can occur. That's similar to bonds. It's very similar to the other appropriation we just did. While it's associated with the budget for 2020, this will actually be a 2019 appropriation. The minimal fund balance is pegged at 12% for budgeted revenues. The Board of Finance reviews potential liabilities, such as the loss of personal property car taxes, and the town being required to contribute to state teacher pension fund, 
cash flows and other potential liabilities are considered anticipated year-end contributions to fund balance based upon government efficiencies during the course of the year are also taken into account. Based upon this analysis, the Board of Finance determined potential available funds and decided that 500,000 was available for the following four projects. 200,000 for our sidewalk installations, 175,000 for the Neroten Ledge interstation, um, intersection design, which Ed Dentil explained to this body in, I believe, January, and is part of the town's part of the CAR grant. Um, 50,000 for short lane construction design, and 75,000 for the Holmes Elementary School replacing the RTU with a gas-fired HVAC unit for the school's cafeteria. F&B met with 10 or 15 members present and voted unanimously to approve this resolution and to recommend the same to the full RTM. Um, the vote on 19-10 um, was 77 in favor with two abstentions. Uh, are there any other committee chairs who wish to report? Elected officials? Members of the RTM? Members of the public? Okay, ready to vote. All in favor of 19-11, please rise. All opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. 19-12, um, consideration and action on appropriation of $3 million for planning and design and construction of a new elementary school in the town of Darien and authorizing the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of $3 million to meet said appropriation. Mr. Davis. I move RTM Resolution 1911, consideration of the action on the appropriation of $3 million for planning, design, and construction of a new, oh, 12, sorry. Consideration and action appropriation of $3 million for the planning, design, and construction of a new elementary school in the town of Darien and authorizing the issuance of bonds and notes in the amount of $3 million to meet said appropriation. Do I have a second? If there's no objections, I propose to waive the reading of the resolution. This resolution was approved by the Board of Selectmen on April 23rd meeting. F&B met on April 29th with Kip Coons, Board of Selectmen member and Building Committee um, Chair present. Um, this appropriation is needed now. The preliminary appropriation is um, intended to fund certain expenses that the Arch Bridge Building Committee must incur to get the project underway and prepare for the possible state grant approval. The bulk of the cost anticipated to be funded through this appropriation is architect engineering fees, also to be funded are fees for testing the studies that must be done early in the process, such as site survey update, marking of wetlands, hazardous material testing, an existing school traffic study, groundwater testing. The Oxridge Building Committee also anticipates hiring a consultant to assist with the state grant approval process. Last expense anticipated is the appropriation is preliminary fees for a construction manager. Education specs were delivered by the Board of Ed in the fall of 2018. The Board of Selectmen has empowered a building committee and much work has already been accomplished to set uh, the above actions in motion, including but not limited to meeting with state officials, architects, and construction managers. <clears throat> this is a timing need that the RTM should understand. The town needs to have a full appropriation to be approved by all government bodies by the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th, to be eligible for the current state funding grants associated with Darien. The committee is aware of the school building requirements, which is an example, 900 square foot um, per classroom, 
um, to be eligible for state grants, as well as other requirements. The current grant percentage for the town of Darien is 10.7% with the potential of an additional 5% for the ELP being moved into um, Ox Ridge. Grant percentage levels for Darien are anticipated to be significantly reduced in the next fiscal year for our town. As such, Failure to do this could result in the loss of millions of dollars to our community for which our taxpayers will have to pay because the price of the building is not changing. Tonight, we're only dealing with the $3 million. In June, the RTM will address an estimate to the best extent possible based upon timing for the full appropriation. We're not here to talk about that tonight. We're here to give them the $3 million to move this forward. Based upon the same criteria that we have been discussing on the other bondings, um, calculations, the average cost over the life of a 20-year bond for this $3 million is approximately $202,000 or three basis points. The FNB committee met, as I said, on April 29th with 10 of 15 members present and voted unanimously to approve this recommendation, this resolution, and recommend the same to the full RTF. Thank you. Any other committee chairs? Yes, Clara. Um, I just wanted to say that the Education Committee was not uh, asked to opine on this, and we did not. And I wondered um, if that's a change in precedent from the last time we voted on a building committee. I just wondered, um, going forward, when you ask for the full amount, will that be something that the Education Committee is asked to uh, consider? You don't have to answer tonight, but I just wanted to register that we were a little surprised that we weren't asked this time. Thanks. Yeah, and any committee can report on anything at any time, whether they're actually assigned to it or not. But that's a good point, and I think um, we will talk about that in rules. I think you should have been, and I'm not sure why you weren't. You should have been secondary on that. Yeah, yeah why wasn't you? We were expecting it. It was just that this... I'm sorry. Yeah. The question was who was primary, because school no no but why wasn't she secondary? no 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 she should have been secondary i wasn't at the meeting the school building committees are a town committee that and so question. and so that's why fmb was primary but i fully expected we had a conversation i expected uh, today when i asked if you were I expected that education would have been secondary reporting. On I, I thought so too, but as I said, we were not, and we did not discuss it at our meeting other than that we were surprised, and I mentioned it to uh, Moderator Morton. So I just wondered, going forward, could yeah, we be a little more careful? Have been, Thank and you. You should be going forward. You should be involved in everything in, on this whole project going forward. Absolutely. Any other committee chairs? Uh, elected officials? Members of the RTM? Uh, Teresa Vote, District 6. Um, I'm on education and I am on rules. And I just want to make it public that two of the members on rules did ask for education to be secondary on it. And I'm still not quite sure why it was voted down. So I just want to say that rules did discuss making education yeah, secondary. Yeah, so I, I think don't know. I missed that meeting. You, 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 you two weren't there to help. Because <laughs> we would have voted for you to be secondary. I'm, I'm surprised you weren't. I would have voted for them secondary. Yeah. Sorry, we missed that one. We should have. Can we get back to the Okay. Um, any other members of the RTM? Any other comments? Okay. Uh, let's vote on 19-12. All in favor? I'm done. All opposed? And before you all leave, we can't quite adjourn yet. We have to have the, the vote. Um, 
We got opposed abstentions. Okay. Um, the vote on 19-11, uh, the special projects was 79 in favor, um, none opposed, and no abstentions. And as soon as we get this vote tallied, I can entertain a motion to adjourn, but we have to wait for the vote to be tallied. Okay, what you've been waiting for, 19-12, 75 in favor, one opposed, and three abstentions. We are done. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second? Thank you all. Have a good evening.